So we're one week away from the special meeting at which the sale of the commanders will be approved. Josh Harris will take over for Daniel Snyder. Unless, of course, it all goes sideways. And silly me, in response to a recent question on this very program, I downplayed the idea of Daniel Snyder having one last gasp, one last way to just screw everything up. I said something like, well, the documents are all signed now. It's just a matter of approving the deal and Josh Harris having the right finances in place, yada, yada, yada. I had forgotten about this issue of indemnification. And I remember back in law school, the first time I heard the word indemnification, I just kind of glossed over and stopped paying attention. It's a basic idea, though, when you're talking about a a situation like this where Dan Snyder is leaving. He wants to leave it all behind him. He doesn't want to be responsible for any liabilities that may arise in the future. And when the indemnification issue first came up, it was almost as if Snyder wanted to be indemnified for claims that could be made against the commanders for workplace misconduct that happened on his watch. And look, through all of the stuff that we've seen in the past few years, there hasn't been a rash of lawsuits filed. Maybe cases were settled before litigation actually made its way into the court system. But we're more than two years removed from the initial punishment that was imposed on Daniel Snyder. Statute of limitations for situations like this is usually two years. I'd like to think that any potential liability arising from misconduct happening within the commander's organization is already known, maybe resolved, but it at least can be accounted for. There's not going to be anything new. But there is one major piece of litigation, and I should have made the connection yesterday. I was so caught up in what these new Gruden emails details from the ESPN article might mean. I overlooked the very important issue of how the NFL and Daniel Snyder will handle the potential for liability arising from the actions of one or the other. And Snyder presumably wants indemnification for anything that could stick to him in this Gruden emails case. The league may want indemnification for Dan Snyder for anything that could stick to them caused by him. That's what this is all about. I don't want to have to pay. Even if I did it, I want you to be responsible. Both sides, I think, want to try to foist liability onto the other, even if maybe they did something that is part of this broader stew of potential, potential settlement, verdict, et cetera. And my working theory would would put both sides at risk here. My working theory based upon the ESPN article what came into focus after I saw that and have followed this story all along. Dan Snyder offers up the Gruden emails as some sort of clumsy gesture to the league to try to get back in Roger Goodell's good graces, gives him a chance to take out a longtime agitator. And then Goodell weaponizes the emails to get Mark Davis to fire John Gruden. So it's possible that both sides have civil liability to John Gruden by the time it's all said and done. What they're trying to wrap up by next Thursday is who's going to pay the bill for anything coming out of the Gruden case. And I saw a response on Twitter to our item from today about the possibility that this whole thing could blow up because of the issue of indemnification. It really would be smart to just settle the damn case with John Gruden before next Thursday. The problem is Gruden's got the tiger by the tail and it would take a hell of a lot at this point to get Gruden to release it. And I hope he doesn't. My own personal curiosity is such that I would want to see how far this rabbit hole goes, where and how the emails were leaked. And if Gruden accepts a settlement, we're never going to find out. But that's why he's so much leverage. If people are nervous about proof ultimately coming to light through the discovery process in John Gruden's lawsuit as to who leaked the emails, and you've got Dan Snyder testified under oath to Congress that he didn't, and you've got the league very stridently saying they didn't. And I've been watching, and this is not exactly the morning beach viewing that I thought I'd be doing while working. I thought I'd maybe be catching up on the news or 
maybe watching the quarterback series on Netflix, I've been re-watching Roger Goodell's congressional testimony from June of 2022 just to make sure that he wasn't asked about the Gruden emails and whether or not the league leaked them. I'm 99.9% sure he wasn't. And as I rewatch this thing, it really is a, distress, uh, a depressing display of how our representative government works, where it's just a bunch of yelling and screaming and pissing and moaning. And they, they, they blew opportunities to really make progress to get to the bottom of a lot of things, including who leaked the Gruden emails. So Roger Goodell's never testified under oath that the league office didn't do it. But Snyder has testified under oath that he didn't do it. And Bruce Allen, the former Washington commander's president, has testified under oath that the league told him it didn't come from them, didn't come from 345 Park Avenue. It came from the team. Bottom line is this. Gruden has an ideal opportunity right now to try to get a significant settlement, a very significant settlement. And, and as I said yesterday, no matter how badly he wants to see this through to the end, there's an offer that can be made to John Gruden that he will not refuse. You keep adding more money, more money, more money, and the end result is eventually John Gruden has got to say yes. Now, is the league willing to do it? Is Snyder willing to do it? But that's the one way to resolve this issue before next week when the sale goes through. Maybe they'll go to Josh Harris and say, hey, that's $6.05 billion. You need to pay another $100 million. You need to come up with another $100 million. Call Magic Johnson. Call your other partners. Come up with $100 million because we're going to offer that to John Gruden to make this thing go away that could cause this whole deal to fall apart. If you really want this team you got to finance the settlement of the John Gruden litigation. And I say that kind of jokingly, but yeah, man. look, it's entirely possible Dan Snyder is just digging in because he knows they're so desperate to get rid of him that he, he can squeeze some concessions out of the league at the last minute. I think it'd be dumb not to do that. And if you are a shrewd business person, you see this opportunity. Now, I'm not saying it's right. You want to be a good partner. You want to have good memories, good relationships. You never know when the the chain of events is going to cause people to maybe need, you know, to help each other out in the future. You want to have a good relationship with everyone when the business partnership is over, ideally. But if he wants to just be a jerk, yeah, he can hold their feet to the fire. I want this. I want that. I want that. Hey, you want to get rid of me? I want this. I want this. I want this. If you want to get rid of me, you give me those things. Otherwise, I'm not going. Wouldn't that be something? I'm sorry, Commanders fans, to possibly dampen your mood on an otherwise nice Thursday afternoon. But until this deal's done, and remember from the get-go, when the Snyders initially issued the statement in November of 2022 suggesting they were exploring selling the team, the, the thinking was it's not done until it's done. And with Dan Snyder, nothing is ever done until it's done. And this indemnification issue could potentially be the thing that blows it all up. And the more the league wants it to not be the thing that blows it all up, the more leverage that Snyder has in those conversations. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.